that jaw thrust is getting your fingers behind the angle of the jaw. It's a really good cheat here that the angle of the jaw is right near where the ear is. It's as far back as you can go along the jawline. When I'm at that point, I then lift up and you can see that the jaw is moving. That means the jaw is attached really to the tongue and now the soft tissues of the tongue and other structures are lifted off the oropharynx and that means that the passage of air can now flow more easily. So just know that sometimes you need your strongest fingers to do this. So I use my pointer finger and my middle finger and sometimes I put my, you know, my palm on the cheeks and that allows me to get an even bigger jaw thrust. So especially in the most difficult patients, this is pretty optimal. So imagine I've got this here. Now, sometimes the tongue and soft tissues are so pronounced that they're blocking the airway. So there's no passage of air possible. If I do a jaw thrust, I'm simply lifting those features up and that allows a nice aperture and opening into the airway, it allows the flow of gas and flow of oxygen. Now the head tilt is again a really useful technique. I often use this when I'm inserting an LMA as well as during, lar during laryngoscopy. And what this does, it, it, it again tries to line up those three axes. So by tilting the occipital joint, I'm now opening up the airway or trying to align the oral axis with the pharyngeal and tracheal axis. So all I'm doing is moving the head like this, but also I open the mouth so I can guide a laryngoscope in and that makes that easier and otherwise I can use my left hand to do a head tilt because I'm going to use a right-handed technique to put in the LMA which again we'll show in another video. So again often the head tilt creates less of a sharp angle I'm able to put the LMA in and that way it falls in easier. So final maneuver the chin lift and really this is putting your fingers just at the chin or the mental prominence and then lifting up to me, it is like a combination where when I do a jaw thrust, I can often then hold the jaw thrust in place with a chin lift. So this is more active and then holding that chin there is much easier. It does take a lot of strength, especially in a mannequin like this, um, but in some patients as well, it can take a lot of, lot of effort. But again, 